Okay, so we're gonna finish up the castle here. Um, basically, you have to, you know, as you saw in the previous video, you have to beat all 100 of the enemies. So you don't have a choice. You have to fight them. So I just finished up with Slash. So now we're gonna go fight Flea. And then we're going to basically go and take care of Magus. And um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Flea is somewhat difficult. Um, he can confuse you, which can put a serious uh, damper on your team, especially if your team is somewhat strong and they'll attack each other. So it kind of becomes a pain in the ass. Um, Flea is a different character. I, I don't know how really... I think... I think it's interesting what they did with him, as you'll see here soon. Um, his appearance. I have a feeling that back when this game first came out, it probably caught a lot of flack because of his appearance. Um, he has very powerful magic spells. They're not as powerful as Magus. Um, and he doesn't really have a lot of life points, though, that I can remember. He, he, aside from being able to hit you with magic spells and whatnot, he, I don't remember him being very hard. I haven't played this, uh, this game in quite some time, but I don't remember him being very hard at all. I remember running through him pretty easy. He was a lot, uh, he was a little bit more difficult than Slash, and that's not, you know, that's not really saying much, because Slash is a bitch. Your real fight is, uh, still to come with Magus. That's the real fight. That's the one you've been training for, because trust me, if you haven't level grinded, he's gonna beat the fuck out of you. There's a lot of these enemies, god damn. While this video was rendering, I was watching a uh, show on Netflix called Brickleberry. I absolutely love that show, <laughs> that fucking bear. I think Malloy is his name. That bear is absolutely hysterical. That show is, uh, filthy. Man, if you haven't seen it, you gotta go watch it. I don't know how that made it on a major network, because that show is just filthy. I've never seen a show get away with so much. Especially for an animated cartoon. So much. Constant sex jokes, constant sexual activities, the killing, the vulgar language. It's awesome. It makes South Park look like a children's show. And that's no bullshit. Okay, so anyway, aside from that, here's Flea. Now, off the bat, Flea looks like a girl, but it's not. Um, Flea is definitely a, um, Flea's a guy. So, it kind of confuses Robo, as you see. He doesn't really know, understand what's going on. But, he, Flea's, Flea's different. Uh, yeah, his appearance is, a uh, very metro sexual, homosexual, I don't know. Homosexual, I don't know, maybe he's a fag, who knows. Alright, so, as you can see, he can put you to sleep. Now, I'm gonna run through him, obviously, this is, this is no joke, but... He can be very difficult only because of the way that he attacks with his sleeping and his confusing attacks and whatnot. That's what puts him really at an odd, an odd sense for you guys. He's, he can be a real son of a bitch. See? Confuses Chrono and Chrono goes and attacks the party. Now, if you're not at a high level like me, then that can be a problem because your defense is going to be significantly lower, which means your attack is going to be that much more effective to your partners. Alright, see, that was pretty easy.
And if I remember correctly, that's not going to be the last time that we see Flea and Slash. Oh, fuck. I was hoping I'd be able to get around her. Him. That. Thing. I don't know what the hell to call it. Shit, I got my game paused in the background. I just remembered about it. I'm playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I'm trying to unlock Sonic right now. I know a lot of people think that Sonic sucks, but for some odd reason, I always do better with him than I do anybody else. It's probably because of how fast he is. Him and Captain Falcon, those have always been my two favorites. I truthfully believe on the Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64, I can beat anybody in that game. I do not believe I have a peer nor an equal. I am the best there's ever been. Especially with Captain Falcon. I run through people. Nobody can do me. You'll never win. God damn, I forgot how long this place was. I love this game with the constant enemies. It's the one downfall. And honestly, I I can say this is the one downfall about this game, is that you have to, um, basically run into every enemy that comes across your path like this. There's not, there's not random enemies, and there's not ways you can really outrun some of them and whatnot. It's just kind of a pain in the ass, because when you want to get through the game, especially with somebody like me who's beaten this game so many times, it just gets kind of tedious running through the same enemies every single time because you can't get past them. You have to fight them. Now, don't get me wrong. This game is still an 11 out of 10. And I know you say that's not possible, so fuck you. It is. In my mind, it is. This is the best game, best turn-based RPG that the hero has ever been. No Final Fantasy VII is not better. No Final Fantasy V is not better. Chrono Trigger is the best when you take Dragon Ball Z and Final Fantasy and put it together, that is what you get. And that is why this game is a masterpiece. I still can't believe how badly they fucked up Chrono Cross. I was so excited trying to play that game when I first saw it and I was like, oh man, this is going to be fucking awesome. I'm going to get to see this and it's going to be somewhat similar and... I didn't read any of the reviews online before I bought it. And god damn was I disappointed. What a fucking sham of a game. Some people actually liked it. I did not even understand what the hell was going on. The battle system is the biggest piece of shit. The whole magical battle thing, you have to have points to attack. And Jesus Christ, that's fucking stupid. I mean, it, 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 they really didn't do anybody justice. If you're looking to play Chrono Cross before this, do yourself a favor and just take that game and smash it over your fucking head or hit it with a hammer, a fire hydrant, I don't care what you do. That game is worthless. It is garbage. To even call that part of the Chrono... Uh, the, the part of the Chrono series is just absolute shit. I'm not surprised that they decided never to remake this game. They don't want it to end up garbage like Chrono Cross, even though I still hope they remake this game. And to be honest, I'm still surprised that the people will allow the Link to the Past, or not, not Link to the Past, the fucking Orc Arena of Time to be remade on the Unreal Engine. How awesome it looks. If you haven't seen that, go check out the Zelda Orc Arena to the Power Orc Arena of Time on the Unreal Engine. Holy shit, it is amazing looking. It is outstanding. Now, I wish they would redo Chrono Trigger. I'm still waiting for the day. They've got to redo it. If they're redoing Final Fantasy VII, which also I should also point out, that game looks like shit. Graphically, it looks cool, but it's pretty clear that they're remaking it into a Kingdom Hearts battle system. That is not what Final Fantasy VII was about. That's fucking garbage. They're just going to lose a ton of fans over it. The only people that are really going to enjoy that game are people who are still 
either relatively new to Final Fantasy or like that style of battle. But if you're an old school fan like me with those kind of games, you're not going to be pleased by that, I can guarantee you. Anyway, when they finally do remake Chrono Trigger, I will be in line. I will take off work for a fucking week if I have to in order to stay and play that game. This is going to be epic when they finally remake it. But if they change that battle system, I'll throw a brick through that fucking GameStop window. Damn, that pisses me off, always taking away the good shit. Especially with such an innovative battle system like this one. That would be like taking Legend of Legea and taking out the command uh, directional buttons. If you've never played Legend of Legea and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a turn-based RPG game, and in order to attack, you press up, left, down, or right. And that corresponds with a left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick, something along those lines. And by putting in those commands, you can make combos. So it's kind of, I don't, don't want to say Tekken, it's kind of like a fighting slash RPG, but it's so cool. It's, it's probably one of the most innovative uh, battle systems, aside from uh, uh, Legend of Mana with the, the circular the circular ring with the ring system, and um, what's the other one? The uh, Grandia series. The Grandia series, that's another one. Legend of Legea has one of the coolest battle systems ever, along with this, Grandia, and the Mana series. And I'm sure that when they finally do remake this game, they'll find some way to fuck it up, because they always do. I'm sure they'll probably give it to some garbage-ass team who will screw the whole thing up. Come on, don't let me fall down another hole. Where the hell is it? I remember the basics. Ah, shit! Oh, fuck nugget. Alright, good. I think I can make it through on this one. For real though, like if you guys want to see something cool and you haven't seen it yet, go to YouTube and type in Chrono Trigger Resurrection and watch the gameplay and the videos that some fans, fans of the game made for the GameCube. They were going to try and release it for free on the GameCube before Squaresoft or Square found out about it and told them and gave them a cease and desist. It looked so fucking good. It was crazy looking. It would have been awesome. And they gave them a cease and desist to make them stop and don't, oh, don't do this. Who cares? Release the shit for free. If you're not making money off of it, then how the hell are they going to sue you because you decided to make a fan replication of something? Who gives a shit? If you're not making money off of it, what are they going to sue you for? I mean, me playing this right now and doing a commentary over it is more likely to get some kind of flack as well, but I'm not going to get copyright noticed over it because there's no copyright infringement here. It's the same thing with music, you know, as a musician, as a singer myself, if you're not doing something that somebody else has already done and selling it, then your chances are that you're not going to get sued or you're not going to be liable for a lawsuit. You know, if you're not stealing music, if you're not doing things like that, you're not going to get in trouble. Those people, I think, could have probably made the entire game, released it for free, and not made a cent off of it if they were just looking to let players experience a different side of the game and a different, uh, a different feel with the updated graphics, and it would have been great. But they put a stop to that. You know, what, you know what, while I'm on this rant, you know what others I think are really fucked up that I actually think we should get back is the Breath of Fire series. I love Breath of Fire. The first, second, and third one were awesome. 
especially the first one for the Super Nintendo. That game is one of the games that helped make me into a massive RPG fan. That game led me to Chrono Trigger, it led me to Zelda, it led me to everything except for Final Fantasy. Cool story behind this whole thing, which a lot of people don't believe and I don't know why because it's not really a surprise. When I was seven years old, we had a tradition in my household. My brother and I would go and stay with my grandmother every Friday night. That was our thing. Go and stay with my grandmother every Friday night with my younger cousin. And we had a lady who was retired and was disabled who lived across the street from my grandmother. She was in her 70s, mid-70s. And her name was Vivian. And all this lady did was sit around and play video games. And all of the games that I play here, as well as talk about and whatnot from my childhood are the ones she had. I can remember it to this day. She had Breath of Fire 1, Final Fantasy 4 or 2 for the Super Nintendo, whatever you want to call it. The one with Cecil and King. Legend of Mana, Lagoon, which, I'm not gonna lie, Lagoon is... Eh. It's, it's like somebody tried to make uh, Wise or East. I don't know how to pronounce it. Wise or East. It's like they tried to remake it, but didn't quite do a good job. Uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. And I believe the other one was... Uh, Final Fantasy V, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it was Final Fantasy V. And every Friday when we'd go to my grandmother's house, we would go over to her place and she would let us borrow a game. And we were only allowed to borrow one at a time, and then when we beat it or decided we don't want to play it anymore, we could bring it back. And the first game that we ever got from her was Breath of Fire 1. And I can remember it to this day. That game, I don't know what it was, I think it was around the time that you get the first dragon transformation. And I just remember being so excited. I can literally beat that game now without even thinking about where to go next. I can do it in my fucking sleep. I know that sounds stupid, but that's what you get when you're Jesus Christ himself. I can do that shit in my sleep. Final Fantasy IV, I can do that shit in my sleep. Chrono Trigger. She didn't have that game, but I've played this so many times I can do it. Oh, A Link to the Past. That was the other one she had. Not Final Fantasy V, it was A Link to the Past. Another one. Another beauty. She had all of these perfect role-playing games, and that's what she was into. She had all the role-playing legends except for Chrono Trigger and Mario RPG for her Super Nintendo, and she had the suit, the, uh, the NES with all the Final Fantasies there. She, I think there was only two. I know she had the first one. I think there was only two made for it, two or three. I know she had, uh, the first one, definitely. And she had all the Zelda games for the NES as well. And we used to get the, all the Super Nintendo games, Legend of Mana and, and Breath of Fire. And when we got Breath of Fire, I probably... See, I was probably eight or nine years old the first time I beat that game. And I remember it being so goddamn difficult at first because I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never played an RPG. I didn't understand the elements of the battle systems. I didn't understand any of that shit. And then I realized how fucking good it really was around the time that we started getting dragons and started actually figuring out the battle system and how to level grind and doing all this stuff. And that literally, that game changed my entire perspective on gaming. It changed my entire perspective on an RPG, on what an RPG should be like. And from that day forward, I've literally played every Breath of Fire game out there. I've played every turn-based, major turn-based uh, retro game that's been released. I've beaten almost every single one of them. And I still continue to to this day. I don't like new generation systems. I can't stand playing online because it's just a bunch of five-year-olds screaming, you know, fuck your mother and eat my doo-doo on, you know, on the microphone and whatnot with their big Goliath headsets with their big old fucking melons sitting on the goddamn floor looking like a bunch of window lickers and whatnot. I can't stand that shit. This is the stuff that I enjoy doing. 
Oh, there's Magus. We're finally here. Okay, so now that I'm done with that rant, well, not quite. Magus as an enemy. He might be one of the hardest bosses in the game to beat, even though it is so early still in the game. Reason is, is because when you fight him, his elements change. And when his elements change, you can only hurt him with that certain element. Now, I'm not going to really worry about it. I know I'm going to beat him. There's no doubt about that. But let's say if you have Robo, Robo's obviously Shadow. If you have Chrono, he's Lightning. If you have Frog, he's obviously Water, if you've gotten all of those by now. When Magus changes his barrier, you can only hurt him significantly if you use that barrier. So like right now, 141. See, barrier change. Only fire damages. So right now I would have to use Luca, but I don't have her. And every time his barrier changes, he hits you with a spell, the the, the second spell of that certain of that certain one, of that certain magic of his barrier. And it attacks all your party. Now if your defense isn't high, he is going to fucking smash you. If you have not been level grinding, he is going to literally just completely decimate you within a matter of turns. You will use up all your revives, you'll use up all your potions, all of your healing items within 5 to 10 minutes, and you will lose this battle. I suggest you seriously level grind before you get to him. If you lose, don't go back to him. Stay in the castle, level grind until you get, you know, 3, 4, 5, 6 levels higher, and then try it again. If it's still not enough, repeat the process. Now watch, see he's using shadow right now. This is also his specialty is using a uh, shadow one. His magic is crazy. The amount of deal damage it can deal is ridiculous. All right, so we're having Robo use laser spin now. You see right there, boom, 830. That is what is damaging Magus. That's what's going to keep him getting hurt. And eventually, after doing it so many times, his defense completely lets down, and you'll be able to... You, right, right here. I believe it's right here. You should be able, after he risks doing that and messes up, you should be able to hit him. Com yep, there it is. You should be able to hit him with anything. This is where I'm going to take control and fuck him up. I'm going to eat his ass alive now. Alright, so basically, that's that's the game plan to beat Magus. He is hard, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. He's hard as fuck. But if you do it the right way, and you level grind, you should be able to beat this guy. Alright, now what was I saying about Breath of Fire? Oh, that's right. It's awesome. Okay. The first one, best one of the series. Second one, very good. Storyline's very good. The graphics and the game the way the battle system works it's a little too cartoony for me i'm not i'm not a big fan of that they and the storyline is awesome i, I like the storyline a lot for one reason and one reason only is because the further you get into the game the more it seems like their creators are bashing the church it almost seems like they're saying that god is a bad thing and you need to kill god which i'm all for i'm perfectly fine with that fucking and the farther you get into the game, the more you realize that's kind of what they're leaning towards. And it starts to get a little more serious. But for the most part, it's kind of cartoony. It's kind of childish. The characters don't, for me, they don't have as much depth as the first one. The first one, the first uh, Breath of Fire installment was very serious. There wasn't many cartoony moments. The graphics weren't cartoony like that. Um... It was a very serious game. You had a point, and your job was to fucking make it happen. I can't remember a point in that game that was seriously kind of kiddish or joking around and whatnot. It was pretty straightforward, and it was it was a serious game. The third Breath of Fire for the PlayStation 1 is a little bit different. It's not open-ended. It's more of a... It's more of a you run on the map, but you're not in a world... You basically go to kind of places like Chrono Trigger, like you've been seeing us do. We are, um... You basically go to, you know, a forest and you hit the X or the A button and then you go into the forest and run through that map. That's similar to Breath of Fire 3. And that also has kind of more, I wouldn't say paper graphics, but it's got more of a 2D animation. But it's not, uh, it's not similar to the Breath of Fire 1 or Breath of Fire 2. 
And it takes a lot more of an advanced approach. There's a lot more technology involved, which kind of, for me, started downhill, but the dragons is what is best on that game. The dragons in Breath of Fire 3 are the best because there is so fucking many, and they look awesome. I recommend highly playing that series if you have never played it before. Do not miss out on that series. Start with number one on a Super Nintendo or an emulator. Work your way up. When you get to Breath of Fire Dragon Quarters on the PS2, fucking kill yourself. And that's my rant for the day.